please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. This is Bazaar Morning Call, live from the CNBC TV 18 headquarters in Mumbai. Good morning, this is Bazaar Morning Call. I am Anuj with me, Sonia and Surbhi. Good morning, both of you. Good morning, Anuj. Hi, good morning, good Surbhi. Morning, good morning, Anuj. Uh, it, you know, it uh, looks pretty good for the global markets, looks yeah. pretty good for the Indian markets. But how good is too good, right? I mean, we've mm. seen a 400-point rally on the Dow. Mm. Uh, we've seen yields stabilizing over there. Lots of buying in our own markets in banks, etc. Mm. Did we preempt that rally? Yeah, that's a tough one, right? Mm. Uh, look, I think the, the easy thing uh, this morning is to just respect what the market is telling you. Actually, that's the that's one thing that you should do every day instead of preempting what the market would do. Mm. Let's respect. Let's see if the market right now market is in a gr good groove and the market is inching up, actually surging. Uh, let's see if it turns. Uh, you know, you should not preempt that. The market will tell you if it's uh, you know uh, you know uh, getting into a point where it wants to turn. Today, I think, is a really big day for the market because what would happen today after the gap up is that you would move above the 20 and 50 day moving average for the Nifty. 20 DMA is 10,615. Good point is that now it's a falling 20 DMA because of the recent correction. Mm. And 50 DMA is 10,618. The recent high when you started to recover was 10,638. This is the zone. I mean, if you know, this is the zone in which you have stubborn shorts. This is the zone in which you have, you know, the, the adventurous shorts and the strong shorts. Uh, and if you start to cross that, uh, and you have a trend day, which is that the morning high is taken out between, say, 10 to 11. In that case, you're likely to have a massive short covering move, further massive short covering move. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, you know, this again would become the level where, uh, you know, if it's not respected, I mean, if it's not taken out decisively, then maybe, you know, the jury is still out on whether what you're having right now is a counter trend move and the trend is still down. So uh, you still need to see a couple of days before getting convinced, right? Because yesterday you told me, you know, when I asked you the same question, yes. you said don't get too excited with one day uh, move. Yeah, because, you know, uh, look, uh, we are having a, you know, big bounce right now. It's the start of a new series. Uh, so you don't have the baggage of the February series. Uh, the first two days have been good. And, you know, we're sitting on back-to-back you know, centuries on the Nifty, back-to-back -back mm -hmm. triple centuries on the bank Nifty. Uh, the FI selling continues in the cash market, but there's some buying in index futures. So even, you know, the FI money is playing for near-term bounce, uh, Sonia. Uh, I think the bigger point here now is how to approach individual stocks and markets. In that, yesterday, I think you saw a return of erstwhile market leaders. Yes. HDFC's twins saw big delivery buying. The Bajaj twins, uh, FinServe and Finance, they saw big delivery buying. And I think what would have been most heartening for bulls, Maruti and Aisha saw Aisha big delivery based buying. That I think is something which uh, would be interesting. Uh, this I think is a rally in which once again the market is giving you an opportunity I think to correct your portfolio, to move out of junk and move into good quality stocks. Uh, because good quality stocks would, you know, you, you can be reasonably sure that HDFC Twins would go back to a lifetime high. You can be reasonably sure that Maruti would go to a lifetime high. You're reasonably sure that Aisha would go to all-time high, Bajaj Twins would go to all-time high. You can't say the same thing about each and every stock in your portfolio. So this is a rally in which your, the market is giving you an opportunity to get into better quality stocks and probably remove a bit of junk. And I think market breadth in that sense will remain a key monetary to watch once again. Anush, morning, it looked like an absolutely perfect morning for the bulls, right? And that's when we had that late night exchange filing from PNB. Now, the amount is 1320, 1320 odd crores. One is that, okay, you can't ignore the, the amount. It's not that small. The second point, Anuj, uh, whether the market will take discomfort uh, from mm. the fact that we don't know. Is mm. there more? Is there another LOU? Is there another bank? And the related question to that is that, uh, you know, uh, the PSU banking index is mm. still 8% off its low. Mm. PNB and stocks like PNB are already at 52-week lows. So do you think the market can ring fence this PSU banking problem and just march on regardless? You know, uh, on this, I'll go back to my schooling days. Uh, you know, in schooling days, we had six subjects. Uh, and, uh, you know, best of four used to be taken into account. Uh, so, you know, I would never study physics, you know, <laughs> and, you know, I would get, say, zero or, you know, ten. Because, you know, my sense was why, you know, care about a subject which, you know, I don't understand. Yeah. And, you know, it's anyway not going to matter because I knew that, you know, I'm going to score the least in that. So, you know, I scored 46, 47 in that and I was fine because, mm. you know, there was computer science, there was mathematics in which, mm. you know, I was reasonably good and I scored, you know, yeah. good in that subject. So, PNB so, is physics. For PNB you. is physics, you know. <laughs> so, and, you know, there's a reason that the stock is trading at where it is because the market refuses to believe that what you saw was, the, was it. Uh, because otherwise, you know, the 
in this big rally, the stock should have also rallied. The fact that PSU banking index is closing at the lows of the day, mm. fact that PNB is just not recovering, is telling you that the market does not believe that the worst of this is out of the way. As of now, the market believes that this is just a stock-specific issue or just a PSU bank-specific issue, okay. and the market moves. Up. And actually, that's one reason that you saw a big rally in private banks yesterday once again, because now private banks are getting that premium once again, that, that, that governance premium. And that explains why, you know, the HDFC twins and the indices of the world and the quotas of the world will continue to trade at four or five times price to book, while these stocks would struggle to get even one time price to book. Uh, I think this is just one more example. I think for the day, the market would just consider it just one more irritant and mm. would want to move on. If the market falls from the high point, PNB would not be the reason. It could be something else. And when the scam broke out, we knew it was just the tip of the iceberg, yeah. right? I mean, it's not a surprise yeah. to anyone. Any in any case, uh, if you're wondering where Lata is this morning, she's traveling for work, so she's not here with us in the show. But nevertheless, let's take a look at what our wise experts have to say as we head into trade this morning. Paul McKitney of Diva Capital says the inflation expectations have now surpassed the Q4 2016 Trump bump. He says commodities and material sectors have seen a resurgence of pricing power due to supply-side discipline and structural reform in China. Together with strong Asian currency fundamentals, he observes a revival of the Asian reflation trade and recommends the inflation group with financials, materials, consumer discretionary and energy as overweight sectors. Diverse top picks within India are Yes Bank, Shriram Transport, HDFC Bank and Axis Bank. Okay, let's get you some money market views as well then. Bhaskar Panda of HDFC Bank says the dollar index has steadied above 89.5 levels ahead of the new Fed Chief's first testimony. He says that stocks and currencies across Asia x Japan also did well against the US dollar. Given this background, he expects the USD INA pair to start consolidating in an intraday range of 64.70 to 64.90. And on the bonds, Bhaskar Panda says the 10-year benchmark bond yield has retraced a bit after touching the recent high of 7.75%. He expects a range between 7.65 to 7.70% for today. Okay, here's the good news for the bulls. Uh, Mangalam with a world view. Good news and how 400 runs hit on the Dow in yesterday's trading session, a percent higher on S&P as well as Nasdaq. Who led the gains? Well, it was Boeing, the index heavyweight, flew the Dow higher. Along with that, we had 3M2 contributing most to those upsides. And with this move, now the Dow and S&P are actually just about 3% away from the previous record highs. Remember, at one point last month, they were down 10% from record highs. And good stocks, they recover before the index recovers. So we have the FANG stocks, which is Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google parent Alphabet. They are at the pre-correction level. So good strength seen in individual stocks as well. Uh, the one thing that the street will be watching out for is Fed Chair Jerome Powell's uh, speech at the house today and how the trajectory for interest rates will be going forward because if you take a look at yesterday uh, US 10 year yields intraday it hit that 2.95% mark and then settled just below that 3% mark so that is something we'll be watching out for across the Atlantic there was green out there as well the three frontline indices in the European region were in the green and not just that even the emerging market space remember the Brazilian markets are closer to the record highs they ended up with gains and the Russian index 1.4% gains on that one too what does that mean for the Asian markets well the Nikkei is clocking in gains of over three, 300 points as we speak. Uh, the Korean markets as well are in the green. Uh, uh, the, the, the Shanghai index is the only one which is underperforming there along with Hang Seng down because of a couple of aluminium stocks and pharmaceutical stocks. But the SGX Nifty, no worries there, indicates a start of 40 points in the open. Okay, all right, Mangalam, thanks so much for that. So green across the board as far as global queues are concerned. Those are pearls of wisdom coming in from Warren Buffett. He went on to also say, don't treat the stock market like a casino and don't invest in exotic investments. Yes, and I think, I think the last line was the one which nailed it. Uh, some people are not emotionally and, you know, psychologically fit for owning Capable, stocks. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, that applies for, uh, you know, stock market investment, trading, uh, uh, 80% of it is your psychology and your, you know, uh, your ability to deal with losses. Time. Exactly. Absolutely. All right. Uh, we'll be getting you snippets of that conversation through the course of the day. Pretty good looking screen across the Asian markets, you'd have to say. The SGX Nifty indicating the start will be in the green third day in a row. Let's see how that plays out. Our research team is now here with us to give you the list of top 10 stocks to watch out for the day. Uh, lots of big stocks and focus Nifty companies as well. We'll get to that in a bit. Anuj, first, what are you looking at? So before that, no, I think the SGX is slightly of the high point uh, may not be the, the you know the worst news for the bulls actually because uh, uh, you know 
immediately don't want it to run, run into resistance. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you know, at lower level, they would be buying, which would once again emerge. But the stocks that I'm watching out for, first of all, the couple of you know refining stocks, uh, MRPL and Chennai Petro. Uh, there's news that Saudi Aramco is mulling stake in some Indian refineries. Uh, uh, that's PTI report. Uh, and anyway, crude prices are up and uh, refineries should benefit back to $67 per barrel. Uh, and both stocks are trading at 20-day moving average. So that's why I'm watching out for this. Uh, and the other one is uh, L&T Finance Holdings. Uh, it's defended its 200-day moving average after a brutal correction. Uh, first signs of delivery-based buying. Uh, big question here is, is the NBFC rally back? I think that is the big question that will be answered. If that is the case, then perhaps uh, L&T Finance, because it's it used to be a strong stock, now, of course, uh, has corrected a lot. Let's see if there's some buying here. Okay, all right, Anuj, uh, thanks for those two. Let's move to Nigel. The big news again came in last evening. Uh, it seems there's no merger, at least not one right now. ACC, Ambuja. Now, Nigel, how damaging or dampening could this news be? Well, there will be a sentiment negative just to, uh, you know, kickstart trade today. Both ACC and Ambuja, I'm expecting them to open up in the red. Uh, remember what the management is saying, as you said, that for now the merger is not happening, though the ultimate goal going ahead is to merge both these two entities. Uh, they have further stated that, in fact, they're getting into an arrangement where they'll be using some materials as well as services, and that could bring some synergy benefits as well going ahead. Just to you know, uh, help our viewers recollect, in May 2017, at that point of time, this merger was announced. Both the two stocks, uh, they uh, gained between 3 to around 5%. And at that point of time, brokerages, they were looking at various synergy benefits, uh, margin expansion, higher EBITDA uh, as well. But from then onwards, the stocks really haven't gone anywhere. It's not that they've run away 10, 15, 20% post the merger announcement. In fact, they've been relative underperformers if you just compare it with the Nifty's move. Credit Suisse, they're saying that, in fact, this will be a bit of a negative in the near term. They're saying that two brands, uh, two brands they're competing in similar markets and that's why, in fact, uh, they are fairly cautious on the sector and they expect uh, a bit of a negative reaction on both these two stocks. A negative reaction to start trade with. Mm. Interesting to see where it goes from there. Okay, Nigel, thanks a lot for that. Yes, negative reaction for sure uh, uh, for ACC and Ambuja and negative reaction for sure for PNB this morning. Abhishek. Well, Anuj, late last night, PNB informed the exchanges that they have detected another unauthorized transaction worth US dollar 204.3 million. Or to put it in simple words, another 1,320 crores is what they have detected. So overall, unauthorized transaction or the fraudulent activity recorded by PNB now stands close to more than 12,700 crores or US dollar 1,976 uh, million. So if you take a look at the net worth as on Q3 FI18, this this fraudulent activity now forms close to 26% of their net worth. And if you include the government's infusion, which will come in Q4, this fraudulent activity now stands at 23.5% of the net worth. However, they have also informed the exchanges that they have received no communication from the government with respect to payment on these fraudulent uh, liabilities from their end. Back to you. Okay, thanks a lot for that. So that situation only gets murkier. You can expect PNB to move into the red today. But Gen Irrigation, there's some interesting developments over there, Naveen. So, Sonia, uh, what Gen Irrigation has done, it's through its 81% hold uh, subsidiary, that is Gen Farms, the company has acquired Enova Food, which is based out of Belgium. Now, this company is into distribution of vegetables, fruits, as well as stockist, and is a dry uh, vegetable processor. So, clearly in line with what the company's agro-processing business has been doing. In fact, this is a forward integration for the company. Talking about the financials, the acquired company, they did a revenue of close to 120 crore rupees in CY17, which is around 12 to 13 percent of the total revenues of the agro processing division of Jane Irrigation. Remember, the earlier the management had told us that the company will be going ahead with the IPO for the agro processing business in FI19 itself. So, looks like an increase in the bandwidth as well as a forward integration for the company ahead of the IPO. Back to you. Okay, all right. Thanks, Naveen, so much for that. So, Jane, in news, what are the other stocks that should be on our radar? Let's ask Sonal. Morning, Sonal. Good morning, sir. Be well. I'll start with Sagar Cements. Uh, this will be in focus today because the board has approved acquisition of two hydro power plants for, with a capacity of both of them around 4 megawatts for a sum of uh, around 27 crores. Other stock that will be in focus today is CCD because the private equity giant KKR has sold around 6% stake, valuing at around 405 crores. On the other hand, the promoter has bought around uh, 55 lakh shares for a total of around 178 crores. And there's more push for electric vehicles. So Mahindra Mahindra has collaborated with LG Chem for lithium-ion battery technology to support the EV revolution in India, LG Chem will develop unique cells exclusively for India application and will be providing it to Mahindra and Mahindra. Back to you. 
Okay, thanks a lot for that, Sonal. So let's do one thing. Let's do a quick recap and then discuss some of the big stories of the day. Our top stocks expected to gain today names like MRPL, Chennai Petro, LNT Finance Holdings, JN Irrigation, Sagar Cements, and MM. While stocks that will be under pressure definitely ACC and Ambuja that mergers on hold now. PNB, more frauds, more scams there, and Coffee Day because of the reasons that uh, Sonal just mentioned. Okay, back to the big story this morning then. ACC has shelved the merger plan with Ambuja Cement. Rakesh Arora, managing partner of Go India Advisors now joins in. Rakesh, good morning. This came out of nowhere really. Your thoughts on what could have happened here? Uh, see, this was largely expected by the market mm. because, uh, you know, the merger was announced in, 2000, in May 2017 and it's taken inordinately long. Uh, so clearly there were issues. And, uh, you know, uh, this was making in uh, for some time. So I don't think our market will be that surprised as uh, you were sounding on Okay. <laughs> Rakesh, hi. Good morning. So suppose a full merger does not go through for the time being, which it is not. And, you know, we just have a watered-down version of that material swap. How negative is it for shareholders, you think? See, I don't... See, uh, if you look at the stock performance, which you guys were just fleshing some time back, Mm. These stocks have underperformed the market uh, since announcement. So uh, there's nothing actually which is built into the stock price. Okay. And uh, so I don't think shareholders were expecting, uh, you know, this to go through, synergies to come through. See, remember there are two parts to the synergies. One is, uh, you know, doing the back end and uh, transportation synergies. And the other is the front end, which is, you know, brand unification, etc. At no point they were talking about brand unification, which is the single most important driver of uh, synergies because you're competing in the same market. So if you have one brand, you can actually have better pricing. So that was never in the offing uh, to start with. So to that extent, uh, you know, that synergy was not built in. But the other synergies can be achieved without merger also. And the large part has already come through. And uh, the announcement says that uh, uh, they'll look to, you know, purchase and sell from each other. That is largely to do with logistics synergies, which they are trying to implement. So, Rakesh, is that uh, going to be material for the stock at all from, you know, an operational standpoint? Uh, what do you see next for both of these, as you were saying, very range-bound counters last few months? See, they've been range-bound because, you know, growth has been uh, slightly slow. Many other competitors, uh, their peers have been expanding quite mm -hmm. aggressively. They've been buying, uh, you know, this is assets also. Now, Ultratech has moved from 40 50 million to 100 million ton mm -hmm. uh, in the time where these guys have done, uh, you know, largely nothing. So to that extent, they have been, uh, you know, range mount counters. But remember, they are throwing a lot of cash, and the cash yields are extremely high. So I don't see any major reaction uh, on the either side. Okay. okay. But would you expect uh, stocks like Ultratech and Shri Cement to to continue to outperform uh, uh, these two stocks? See, uh, they have outperformed massively over the last uh, four or five years, if you uh, see that. Hmm. In the near term, I don't think there's any, uh, you know, uh, material catalyst for Ultratech or she to really outperform. There are two reasons. One is that they've expanded capacity well ahead of, you know, the demand coming through. So they're sitting on high financial and operating leverage, which will not play out till the time demand picks up. And number two is that uh, some of the advantages that she and Ultratech had, which was higher usage of pet coke, etc., has turned negative with the yeah. uh, petco prices going up so materially yeah. so uh, to that extent in the near term i don't think there's any uh, you know major reason for our performance to continue mm -hmm. but from a long-term perspective definitely those companies will grow much faster okay so no reason for the outperformance to continue in the near term just wanted to get your thoughts in on the cannibalization issue because that will arise again right with respect to acc and ambuja i mean they both compete in the same markets for the same share uh, now how does that pan out no, so, Sonia, that was not going to change with the merger. Till the time they, they had one brand. Mm. If you have two brands, that was always going to be the case. And, uh, you know, both ACC and Ambuja are strong brands, and it's a very difficult decision for Wholesome and Lafarge to take mm. when they want to, you know, bring Wholesome brand or Lafarge brand to India and unify these two brands. But they'll have to take a big hit someday. Mm. Okay. But they are not really prepared for it as we can make out from the merger because it's been called off because of cost reasons. All right, Rakesh, thanks a lot for your time uh, uh, this, this morning. Uh,
as Rakesh Arora is saying that uh, perhaps the market knew that uh, it's not going to happen, the kind of delay that has already happened, more than one and a half years since that merger was announced. And of course, uh, now they're not going ahead with, ahead with that. Uh, there are some more thoughts from uh, Anil Singhvi, someone who knows cement sector probably better than anyone else. So here are his thoughts. I think there is a bit of a design, so I wouldn't give it by just the business compulsion. And you don't take 10 months in, in okay. merging the two cement companies which are under your own ownership. Look at how Ultratech mm. was created by Kumar Mangalam mm. Betla by, by merging the Indian Rayon and Gasim cement companies. Mm. So I don't think there is any merit in this whole uh, uh, game which is being played out. I think according to me, there is a bigger design to frustrate the minority share shareholders. I think both the boards have failed in, in really coming out to a, 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 a much better plan for the minority shareholders.